these have jointed appendages and prawns when you see the prawns you can see that they are covered by a shell like structure right this is an exoskeleton which is made up of chitin they actually help these organisms to balance during flight or balance whenever they are sitting on a fragile surface so all that is is very very important be careful with the question dash is not the characteristic of arthropods which is not the characteristic now radial symmetry is not the characteristic because arthropods exhibit bilateral symmetry so the right answer here is a hello everyone a warm welcome to the session on biology for class 11th cbse i am dr divya biology faculty vidyashram school of excellence mysore so in this session let us learn about phylum arthropoda and the chapter 4 that is animal kingdom so we learn the characteristics of arthropoda and then move into understanding some of the multiple choice questions that can be framed under this particular topic in exam point of view so talking about phylum arthropoda so they are the largest phylum because all the insects come under phylum arthropoda and we know that insects are distributed throughout right so there are a wide variety of insects millions of insects that are there so therefore it is the largest phylum and they have organ system level of organization wherein a group of organs come together to perform a particular function and their cell arrangement is triploblastic wherein the cells are arranged in three embryonic layers that is an outer ectoderm and inner endoderm and between the ectoderm and the endoderm there is a layer of cells in the middle which is called as the mesoderm talking about the body cavity they have a body cavity and hence they are coelomates wherein coelo meaning body cavity so talking about the structure they are bilaterally symmetrical meaning when i draw a line exactly at the center of the insect one half so if you can see this half looks exactly similar to this half or the right side is the mirror image of the left side of the insect so therefore they are bilaterally symmetrical and arthropods they are called they are given the name insects are placed under arthropod and the name arthropod is given because arthro means jointed and poda means appendages of feet so they have jointed appendages so that is why they are called as arthropods and talking about the segments they are segmented now here don't get confused they are segmented but they are not metamerically segmented right metamerical segmentation is found in annelids that is in the case of earthworms leech and all that wherein in the segments up till a few segments the organs get distributed they get repeated in a serial manner but in this case the organs do not get repeated only thing is that if you carefully observe the body of insects you can find segmentations or cross walls in their body next body of arthropod is covered by a chitinous exoskeleton so that is why these organisms have been placed under arthropoda wherein all the insects are there now prawn also comes under arthropoda but we don't get we don't consider prawn a insect right but still prawn is placed under arthropoda because of two main reason one is prawns also have jointed appendages which other fishes do not have right so they these have jointed appendages and prawns when you see the prawns you can see that they are covered by a shell like structure right which is their exoskeleton which is made up of chitin and insects also say for example you see a cockroach on the top of the cockroach you can find a covering which breaks like a chip or a chips potato chips how it breaks just like that it breaks so that covering that is there which is not too bony also not too fragile and that is nothing but the outer covering of the cockroach which is which forms the exoskeleton or the arthropods which forms the exoskeleton and what is it made up of it is made up of chitin a compound called as chitin therefore they have an chitinous exoskeleton next the body of insects it is divided into head thorax and abdomen so this is the head part head thorax and the abdomen region so the body is distinguished as head thorax and abdomen region 
and they have jointed appendages as I told you. Can you see here? This is one appendage which is jointed at this point and this is one more appendage. Here also there is a joint. So they have jointed appendages. You can see here a joint here then one more joint here. So they have jointed appendages. So here also there is a joint if you can see. So that is why they are called as arthropoda. So next talking about the respiratory organs, the circulatory organs and all that. I told you they have organ system level of organization. So respiratory organs can be gills, book gills, for example, prawns. Prawns have gills and they can be books, lungs or they can have a tracheal system for breathing like wherein the trachea acts like a windpipe and therefore carrying in the air into the lungs. So they have a circulatory system which is of open type. So open type circulatory system means the heart doesn't have arteries, veins or capillaries to carry the blood to specific organs. Instead what happens? The blood comes out of the heart just like that directly and all the organs get bathed in it or it is it just uh, the blood washes all the organs or it's nothing like a pipe system is not there for the carrying of blood from the heart to the different organs. So that is nothing but open type circulatory system and these animals have sensory organs. Nowhere so far we had studied in other phylums under kingdom animalia wherein they exhibited that is wherein they had these sensory organs. It is these organisms that have sensory organs like antenna. So this is the antenna. Antenna is nothing but if you have seen the ants, the butterfly and all that they have antenna right. Antenna leads them to a food or whenever they come across something fallen on the ground or they come across nectar or butterflies to check whether in the flower nectar is there. They just sit on the petals of the flower and insert their antenna right down towards the nectar region so that they can feel whether nectar is there and once they get to know that nectar is there they just put their that is snout and then draw the nectar out of it. So for that it is very very important that is antenna it acts like a sensory organ to get signals and next eyes wherein they have the compound and the simple eyes. So compound eyes the eyes they have multiple lenses in their eyes for the best example is bees. They have multiple eyes, eyes so that is why they are capable of seeing very very far distances or they can have simple eyes like how we have and they have some balancing organs. These balancing organs are called as statosis. So these statosis or the balancing organs which are there they actually help these organisms to balance during flight or balance whenever they are sitting on a fragile surface for all that it is very very important and this is one of the important characteristic because the having antenna and having statosis is two important characteristics of these arthropods. Next excretion it is through malphigian tubules so it is an excretory unit which is nothing but called as malphigian tubules so uh, excretion takes place through malphigian tubules. Next talking about the reproduction, they are dioecious meaning the male insect is separate and the female insect is separate. So therefore the sexes are separate or it is dioecious and fertilization is usually internal wherein the sperm fuses with the egg and then after the fertilization process then only the insect lays the egg. But uh, otherwise only thing is don't think that okay they are laying their egg outside then how can fertilization be inside? inside. It is nothing but the sperm will enter into the female insect, it will fertilize the egg and then it will, and that fertilized egg will be laid by the female insect. So that is why fertilization is usually internal in this case and they are oviparous that is they lay eggs. So they are egg laying animals, they lay eggs. And the development may be direct or indirect. So development may be direct means they don't have an uh, in between stage that is a larval stage or something like that or it can be indirect means wherein they have a larval stage. The best example is silkworm, uh, butterfly they all have a larval stage but these do not have a larval stage. So development may be direct or indirect. Next some of the examples under this particular phylum that is arthropoda. There are some economically important insects which are very useful for 
uh, the farmers, like which the farmers can rear and they can make money out of it. So it is Apis, which is commonly called as the honeybee. So we have Apis, the honeybee. Then we have Bombyx, Bombyx, that is silkworm. So what silk is got from silkworm and silk is one of the costliest material that is there, which is marketed outside because nowhere else silk is produced. So that is why. So silkworm, then we have lacifer, that is the lac insect. So the lac insect, that is lacifer. And then there is some vectors. So vectors means these are the insects which carry diseases. The best example is all the mosquitoes, that is the anaphilis mosquitoes, the Q-legs and the Aedes mosquitoes, they are all vectors. Why? Because they carry the parasites, that is the filarial worm uh, and the butcher area, all that they carry in their body and they deliver it into the human beings causing diseases like malaria, dengue, chikungunya and all that. So that is why, because they act like vehicles wherein these parasites will enter into the body of the mosquito and the mosquito when it goes and bites a person in order to draw in blood, it will inject the parasite into the bloodstream of that particular person and that particular person will develop diseases. So that is why they are called as vector because they are carrying, they are acting like vehicles wherein they are carrying the parasite from one place to another place. Next, next is pests. Some are pests. So pest, locusta, so locust. Locusts are one of the gregarious pests that are there. Why? Because they come in huge swamps and they can completely destroy the entire crop field at a stretch. So that is what the locusts do. So this is the locusts. Next, we have the living fossil that is Limulus, which is called as the king crab. So this is Limulus. So limulus, it is called as the living fossil. Living fossil means it was there earlier itself, like how dinosaurs. Dinosaurs are also fossils now. But we don't call them as living fossils because today in this present world, they are not there. Only their dead remaining parts are there. So they are the dead fossils. But these are living fossils because till today also they are there. And we can study these organisms to understand other organisms which were there in the earlier times which are not there today. So that is why we call it as the living fossil. So king crab or limonus is a living fossil which is of great importance for the evolutionary studies and all that. So now we will look into some of the MCQs that can be framed under this particular topic. So dash is the largest phylum in animal kingdom. It is arthropoda because arthropoda is nothing but insects. So is it mollusca, ascalmens, annelids, no molluscas. We have the oysters, the octopus and all that. Ascalmens, the roundworms and annelids, it is the leeches and uh, those which have segments, that is metameric segments. So here the right answer is arthropoda. Next, organisms having jointed appendages are placed under echinodermata, no. Echinodermata, organisms having spines on their body are placed under echinodermata. Is it mollusca? No. Organisms having a visceral hump, they are placed under mollusca. Is it annelida? No. Organisms exhibiting meta metamerism is placed under annelida. So therefore, the right answer here is arthropoda, wherein arthro means joint. And poda means the feet, so jointed appendages. Arthropods have dash level of organization. Is it cellular tissue organ or organ system? So they have organ system level of organization. So next, the exoskeleton of arthropod is made of, is it cellulose, is it chitin, is it pectin or is it calcium carbonate? So not cellulose because cellulose, plants usually have cellulose. Is it pectin? No. Pectin is also usually found in some of the fruits. Chitin, yes, chitin is the right answer here because I told you their exoskeleton is chitinous. It is made up of chitin. And is it calcium carbonate? No, it's not calcium carbonate because calcium carbonate are found in mollusks, mollusks usually. So that is why the right answer here is chitin. Next, dash is not the characteristic of arthropods. Is it radial symmetry? Arthropods exhibits bilateral symmetry 
bilateral symmetry. Open type circulatory system, yes, they have open type circulatory system. Book gills for respiration, they have book gills for respiration. Malfusion tubules for excretion, yes, they have malfusion tubules for excretion. So, what was the question here? Be careful with the question. Dash is not the characteristic of arthropods, which is not the characteristic. Now, radial symmetry is not the characteristic because arthropods exhibit bilateral symmetry. So, the right answer here is A. Next, dash is a vector. Vector is the one that carries an infection from one place to another, right? So, here dash is a vector. Is it Anopheles, Culex, Aedes, all of the above? So, Anopheles is a mosquito, Culex is also a mosquito, Aedes is also a mosquito. So, all the three are vectors. So, therefore, an option D, that is all the above is the right option here. Apis is commonly called as silkworm, honeybee, lac insect, locust. So, silkworm is called as bombyx, bombyx mori. So, it is called bombyx. Next, honeybee. Okay, honeybee is called as apis. Lac insect, lacifer or locust, it is commonly the grasshopper, locusta, it is called as locusta. So, therefore, here the right answer here is honeybee because honeybee, apis is commonly called as honeybee. Option B is the right answer. So, questions can be framed. Bombix is commonly co called as or silkworm is also called as or lac insect is also called as. So, that is how questions can be framed. Next, dash is a gregarious pest. So, pest means something which destroys a crop, right? Destroys something else. So, here pest, is it lacifer, is it apis, is it bombis or bombix or it is locusta. Lacifer is an economically important insect which is also called as lac insect. Apis is nothing but honeybee which is economically important. Bombix is also, it is silk, silkworm which is also again economic important. It doesn't cause harm to the people or to the crops. So, here therefore a pest is locusta, that is locust which actually destroys the crop field in a very short period of time. So, therefore that is why they are called as a gregarious pest. Option D is the right answer here. Next, dash is an example for living fossil. Is it apis? No. Bombyx? No. Limulus? Yes, because limulus or they can ask the option here as king crab also. Both are one and the same. Anopheles? No, because apis and bombyx are economically important. Anopheles is a vector. A living fossil is the king crab. So, option C is the right answer under this. Next, the balancing organs in arthropods are called... What are they called? Are they called flame cells? No, flame cells are something related to excretion and osmoregulation. So, flame cells are usually found in platyhelminths. That is the flatworms. So, flame cells, they are used for osmoregulation and excretion in the case of flatworms or platyhelminths. For example, the tapeworm, fasciola or liver fluke, etc. And parapodia, no. Parapodia because they are found in enolids. That is, uh, the best example is Neris, which is an aquatic analid, right? So, in that they have these foot-like structures, lateral foot that is there or lateral appendages which help them to swim, which is called as parapodia. So, therefore, that is also not the right answer. Is it radula? No, radula we usually find in mollusks. So, and they help the organism to take in food. So, it's not the right answer here. That is oysters, in oysters, octopus and all that we find radula. So, statocyst is the balancing organ that is found in arthropods which helps them to balance during flight. So, this was about the session wherein we learnt about the characteristics and got to know some of the MCQs under this particular topic. So, I hope you understood the session well. We shall meet again in the coming session with a new topic and discuss the MCQs under that particular topic. So, see you in the next session. Thank you.